Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Indian PM Modi unveils projects to boost connectivity and religious tourism in Uttarakhand. Pakistan poll body disqualifies former PM Imran Khan from public office. And Sri Lanka Central Bank Governor sees inflation peaking, says IMF funding crucial. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday offered prayers at the iconic Kedarnath Temple and the Badrinath Temples in Uttarakhand state as he unveiled various projects to boost connectivity and religious tourism. He accused the previous governments of leaving the centers of faith across the country in a state of neglect for years and claimed they are now being restored to their lost glory. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday offered prayers at the iconic Kedarna Temple in Uttarakhand state as he unveiled various projects to boost connectivity and religious tourism. Donning the traditional Chola Dora outfit that was gifted to him by Himachali women, PM Modi paid obeisance at Kedarnath and laid foundation stone of development of a ropeway from Gorikund to Kedarnath shrine that will reduce travel time from 6 to 7 hours to only about 30 minutes. The major infrastructure development aims to give a boost to religious tourism, which will give a fillip to the economic development in the region. The Prime Minister later reviewed the progress of development works, followed by laying the foundation stone of another ropeway project from Govind Ghat to Hemkund Sahib that will reduce travel to the Sikh shrine from more than a day to only about 45 minutes. He also inaugurated projects to boost road widening and connectivity at Mana, considered the last village in India. के बीच आकर मुझे दो रॉपवे प्रोजेक्ट के सिलान्यास का सौभाग्य मिला है। इससे केदारनाथ जी और गुरुद्वारा हेमकुंड साहब के दर्शन करना और आसान हो जाएगा। The Prime Minister also paid obeisance at the famous Badrinath Temple Shrine in Chamoli district. In his address, Modi accused the previous governments of leaving the centers of faith across the country in a state of neglect for years and claimed that these places are now being restored to their lost glory. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's election commission disqualified former Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday from holding public office for five years after its tribunal found him guilty of unlawfully selling state gifts given by foreign dignitaries and heads of state. A close aide of Khan has said a challenge would be lodged in the High Court. Till the Rats reports came in, protest had erupted across parts of the country condemning the verdict. Pakistan's Election Commission on Friday disqualified former Prime Minister Imran Khan from holding public office for next five years over charges of unlawfully selling state gifts received from heads of other nations and foreign dignitaries in the state treasury, also called Tosha Khana. Khan, who has denied the charges, was accused of misusing his position to purchase and sell gifts received during state visits abroad that were worth over 140 million Pakistani rupees. The tribunal was expected to deliver a detailed ruling later in the day. The lawmakers of the ruling coalition government had filed a case with the Election Commission of Pakistan in August against 70-year-old Khan seeking his disqualification for failing to reveal the proceeds from the sale of gifts. Khan's close aide, PTI leader Fawad Chaudhry, in a tweet rejected the verdict and asked Khan's followers to stage protests and said the constitution can be saved only by reversing the powerhouses. This comes as Imran Khan had earlier assigned PTI workers the task of bringing thousands of people each to the massive long march towards Islamabad, which in his words could be announced at any time. Khan, who was ousted as Prime Minister in April in a parliamentary vote, 
has demanded snap election which the ruling coalition has rejected saying voting will be held as scheduled later next year and more news from pakistan pakistan's prime minister shehbaz sharif has said that he will not allow private import of wheat as the flood affected country already has sufficient stocks and there is a need to save precious foreign exchange the floods have led to damages over 30 billion us dollars further weakening pakistan's economy already in turmoil with a rising current account deficit and inflation above 20% Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif said on Thursday that the country has sufficient stocks of wheat and he will not allow its private import to save precious foreign exchange. Sharif's statement came a day after European traders said a government agency in Pakistan had issued a new international tender to purchase and import 500,000 tons of wheat. Addressing a meeting in Islamabad, Shehbaz said the production of wheat was likely to be less than the demand consequent to the floods. and the government wanted to distribute seeds to the farmers for the next crop with equal cost sharing with the provincial governments addressing a meeting in islamabad shehbaz said the production of wheat was likely to be less than the demand consequent with the floods and the government wanted to distribute seeds to the farmers for the next crop with equal cost sharing with the provincial governments he added that the government had imported thousands of tons of wheat to overcome the shortage for the last year i would not allow this i would not allow this ki private sector aap mangwa le apni marzi ki qeemat par main kisi ko dosh nahi de raha kisi pe ilzam laga raha kisi ko i'm not casting any aspersion kisi pe main doubt nahi kar raha we are all um, honorable pakistanis all uh, provincial governments are all very honorable they are doing a great job lekin ek system hai ek tabahi ho gayi hai foreign exchange ka bahut ek ek mushkil mamla hai The floods which have killed nearly 1700 people and led to damages over 30 billion US dollars have further weakened Pakistan's economy. Already in turmoil with a rising current account deficit, inflation above 20% and a sharp currency devaluation. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves that have fallen to around 1 month of imports consist largely of oil and gas purchases. Moving on residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised concern over frequent load shedding in the region which has continued to afflict their lives there have been several protests over the issue in recent months but the Pakistan government has continued to ignore the people's plight residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir have expressed they have continued to have a distressing time due to prolonged power cuts expanding to 6 to 10 hours A local journalist lamented that the whole region lies in the abyss of power outages which are disrupting life, businesses and studies of children. Despite having mega dams and hydropower projects like Neelam Jhelum hydropower plant, they have to face such a situation. There have been several protests over the issue in recent months, but the Pakistan government has continued to ignore the people's plight. पूछा है कि बिजली आज़ाद कश्मीर के अंदर इस वक्त चौबीस सौ मेगावाट से ज़्यादा कि तीन हज़ार के मेगावाट के करीब बिजली पैदा की जा रही है जबकि आज़ाद कश्मीर की कुल ज़रूरत जो है वो चार सौ मेगावाट के करीब है लेकिन बदकस्मती से यहाँ पे जो इस वक्त सूरत हाल है वो ये है कि छः छः आठ आठ नहीं दस दस घंटे भी लोड शेडिंग हो रही है और ख़ासकर शाम के औकात में लोड शेडिंग ज़्यादा होती है तो हालाँकि चार सौ मेगावाट कुल हमारी खपत है और इसका कोई लोड शेडिंग लोड शेडिंग की कोई बनती नहीं है लोकल्स हैव लॉन्ग ब्लेम्ड इस्लामाबाद फॉर डिप्राइविंग देम ऑफ देयर बेसिक राइट्स क्लेमिंग द एजेंडा इज टू कीप द रीजन अंडर डेवलप्ड दे ब्लेम पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट एश्योर्स देम ऑफ डेवलपमेंट बट इट हैज ओनली गिवन देम आर्स ऑफ लोड शेडिंग लैक ऑफ ड्रिंकिंग वाटर अलोंग विद टर्निंग द रोरिंग रिवर्स इनटू स्मॉल रिवरलेट्स और ड्रेन्स And a news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's central bank governor has said that inflation in the island nation is peaking, with price rise likely to ease. He said that the loan program from the International Monetary Fund is crucial to tackle the economic crisis. Sri Lanka's central bank governor Nandalal Virasinghe has said that inflation in the island nation is peaking. with price rises likely to ease and program to recover the country from the current economic crisis has now reached a critical juncture local media reported virasinghe in an interview said the bank needs to keep rates high 
to bring down inflation while price rises were expected to slow in December and January. The governor said that the negotiations with the International Monetary Fund IMF were successful and now debt restructuring is important for disbursement of the loan program. He pointed out that tax revisions and increase in interest rates were some of the tough decisions taken to get rid of inflationary situation. The government is expected to present its budget for 2023 to Parliament in mid-November, which is expected to include higher taxes and wider reforms of state enterprises in line with commitments made to the IMF. Sri Lanka's financial crisis was partly caused by steep tax cuts in 2019, which together with the impact of the pandemic resulted in multiple ratings downgrades that logged it out of the international financial markets. And moving on to news from Nepal, the Nepal's Election Commission has recommended legal action against CPN, Unified Socialist Chairman Madhav Kumar Nepal, for breaching the election code of conduct. The Maoist leader has been accused of luring voters by telling them that they would get job opportunities abroad for free. The Nepal Election Commission on Thursday recommended legal action against CPN, Unified Socialist Chairman Madhav Kumar Nepal for breaching the election laws and code of conduct. Reports suggest Madhav Kumar Nepal during his election campaign on Wednesday had assured his voters that they would get job opportunities abroad without paying for airfare and visa process. The poll body on Thursday morning sought a written clarification from Madhav Kumar Nepal. However, within hours it recommended the police for action, saying that its investigation found that there was no confusion that the statement was made by the Maoist leader. Madhav Kumar Nepal, CPN Unified Socialist, is part of the five-party ruling alliance led by centrist Nepali Congress, which has been in government since July last year. Earlier this week, the poll body had also warned candidates and political parties against holding mass gatherings. It said only door-to-door -door programs can be conducted before November 3, or 17 days before the election. The recent economic woes, surging energy prices and political stability are expected to be the priorities for voters in the elections later to be held on November 20. And known as the youngest social media influencer in India's Jammu and Kashmir, a 10-year-old girl has taken the internet by storm with the social media videos. She regularly posts videos on her social media page where she highlights scenic beauty of Kashmir and also draws attention to the problem in their community. 10-year-old girl Aksa Masrat from Sopor district in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir has taken the internet by storm with her social media videos. Known as the youngest social media influencer from the Kashmir Valley, Aksa regularly posts videos on her social media page called What Aksa Says, where she speaks about the scenic beauty of Kashmir Valley and also draws attention to problems in her community. She makes videos on social issues like dog menace, traffic jams, infrastructure and on the price hike. She says she got inspiration from her maternal uncle who is an acclaimed photojournalist. When I came to the videos, I spent more time with my mom. That's why I got inclined towards the camera and I wanted to make videos. So my mom has my role play here. He is the one uh, because of whom I got the motivation and he is the role model when it comes to making videos. The budding influencer is currently studying in 5th standard and has more than 2,800 subscribers on YouTube and 58,000 followers on Facebook. The young talent has made 50 videos so far and has received immense support and love from the viewers along her journey. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.